very difficult. You feel like you will never be okay again. And when listening to our wonderful Janet and Carolyn, and that idea of mending our broken heart, I think we need to all realize that can be something we can do. We can do. And sometimes it's not an inside job. Sometimes you need to go to a therapist, you need to go talk to somebody and say, I'm going through a difficult time. Okay. Well, this is a, a very interesting day. This is a day that I found out is National Good Neighbor Day. Oh, wow. And National Good Neighbor Day is the third Sunday in September. And what is so exciting about that is that we had another day when I looked at that. Have you ever looked at what days things are? Yes, I have. And, and the, most amazing <laughs> thing, the, the most amazing thing is that Governor Brown signed a proclamation on Friday that we are going to have a state holiday called American Indian Day. And it's going to be honored. We're going to be, he, uh, and it is going to be recognized all through California, just like Old Columbus Day, uh, American uh, Abraham Lincoln Day. It's going to be this day of really getting together and honoring. And if you haven't read it, I, I thought I had it here, but I guess I don't. If you haven't read this proclamation, go online. He talks about all the things that the Native Americans have done for California. Yes. And it's wow. incredible. He talks about the different tribal things. And you read it and you just go, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. I mean, that is wow. fantastic. Wow. And his thank hope you, is it's going to travel all over the country. Is he calling it Native American Day or American Indian Day? No, Native American. There oh, used good. to be an American Indian Day before, okay. and he specifically said this is Native, Native American, American Day. What day is it going to be? It was Friday. It was Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was just yeah. signed Friday, and made, it, it was signed and proclaimed that Friday was the day, and that's wow. in September. So, uh, there are so many of those kinds of days, like, you know, National Good, a Good Neighbor Day, and now Native American. There's National Apple Pie Day. And National Apple Pie Day. Oh, yeah. Yes, Kathleen. Does that mean that we won't have school on that day? No, well, that's what I mean. it's, because it's not a national holiday yet. It's probably going to depend on the school district. So I'm sure places on the reservation are going to know school that day. What do you think? That's all we'll, we'll opt for that. That sounds pretty good. Okay. And um, uh, we have a, a guest speaker today, but I haven't asked uh, uh, Chris when you wanted to speak. Uh, yeah, early. Right now? Yeah. Uh, Kathleen, yes. Um, I just wanted to say, too, I was in um, New Mexico at the Pueblo Cultural Center in Albuquerque about not long ago, and one of the schools, one of the Indian schools, had reopened for the first time, it was like maybe 2012 or 13, as a charter school where they actually study their culture. So it was like <coughs> groundbreaking to me to see that, that it had turned everything around and that had become a charter school. Right, right, right. Yeah. For studying their culture. You know, when we were in Wyoming, uh, the woman we were talking to said, you know, the, the American Indians come in off the reservation and they are just not nice to us. And I kind of giggled. I thought, oh good, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she doesn't deserve it. But it was kind of like that, that energy there, you know, she was so, how could they not like white people? lady going, well, why would they? And I said, well, it's it's not you particularly. It has to do with the situation. Well, it She's might be you. For those of you know who Terra Nova is, it could be. Terra Nova said that? Yes, Norma. They, just, they have a new program on television called... Oh, I understand if people can't, people can't hear you. They have a new program on television called Ten Things You Didn't Know. Oh, I love that, yeah. Oh. And recently they did one where this Indian chief gave um, a very positive report of what the American Indians did to help start our country. Right. And it was really amazing. Yeah. Well, and if you want to follow something interesting, follow the whole red skin uh, controversy. It's, it's amazing what those people said. Well, we can't change the name just because Native Americans don't like it. It's my team. And you go, 
what? Have any of you people ever wonder why you aren't more embarrassed about being white? Yeah. You know? No, no. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed with the idea. You know, got four, four, people, four, yeah, four people saying, well, what are we going to do with our regalia? And I thought, what a poor choice of words when you're talking about a redskin's jacket, you know? And I was like, wow. Well, got it? <laughs> and it's like, uh, burn it? Uh, and they said, well, we went from the Braves to the Redskins. What do they want? Oh. And there were, there were eight Native American people who were just very quiet and not stoic, but just very quiet and talked. And you went, yeah, I want one of those, you know. It was, so follow the controversy because they, they need some support here on uh, what, they're, what they're going to do. So there's a lot of things going on. So we have Native American Day and we have National Good Neighbor Day. And we're going to be hearing more about different ways that we can support our state and our, and our, um, our people. Well, talking about supporting people, our wonderful Chris Brown is going to be talking. Last week we had Reverend Ann talk about... Uh, Rosh Hashanah, and this week we're going to have somebody talk about Yom Kippur. Usually Rosh Hashanah and uh, Yom Kippur here have become Jewish High Holy Days clumped together. And people said, well, I didn't know there was a difference. Oh, yeah. I thought, oh yes, oh. we need to talk about that. And yes. it just and that's why I kept saying Rosh Hashanah is the lead up to Yom, Yom Kippur. Kippur. Right. And, and if you wonder, why does Dottie keep talking about Judaism? Well, that started so much of who we are as a monotheistic religion. And so many religions come from the Old Testament. They come from Judaism. So that's why. We're talking about our roots. We're talking about the basis. And so please welcome uh, Chris Brown. Yay! Donnie, you're very special. I really appreciate you. Oh, well, thank you. I like that. We, we appreciate you, too, or you wouldn't be up here. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in front of a microphone is the second to the first. But I wasn't reading it. Did we start calling you Rabbi Brown and now? New Year's for me. Well, you know, it is a question. I do have a different name. I, I have a name that's not Chris, so that I can circulate in synagogues and other places. So put your <laughs> put your face yeah, closer so to the mic so, we're, so we all can hear you. Whether your name is Chris or not, it's okay. Yeah, it was, it was uncomfortable for me. So, um, want you remove those slippery things? From you know, it's the it's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, got her. Good. I, I am truly, truly pleased to, to stand here and, and talk about what, we're, what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to have some help from Janet as well. And um, today's uh, short presentation is uh, the coalescing of a lot of ideas that I've just had in my body for a very, very long time. And I was talking to Dottie about it, and I said, I'd sure like to, you know, kind of share some of these things. So that's what it comes from. Today, uh, just the tip of the iceberg, I want to talk about um, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And the first question I have is, by a show of hands, is there anybody who's actually attended a Yom Kippur service? Wow. Okay, great. Well, so this is why we're hitting the tip of the iceberg, because there's so very much. Um, the bottom line is this. I discovered, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I discovered that... What I found personally in Judaism was incredible intimacy, incredible intimacy with, with God. Um, and that's what I want to share with you today, and it's going to be interactive. There's going to be some music and singing, and my, my thought about that is if, if you want to sing along, if, that's great. If you can't figure out the words, that's fine. If you support the intention, please feel free to hum along. Um, and quite frankly, I'm thinking that we should be standing up and dancing. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's why we're over here. <laughs> okay, so um, an odd thing I want to do, I want to establish some, some quick credentials. Because 
last time I was up here I said that I was raised in Christian science, and all of that is true. However, as families are wont to do, there are secrets. And when I was 18, through some arm twisting and some other things, I discovered <coughs> that I was Jewish. And I'm not going to go into that background, but there you go. Um, I'm Ashkenazi, Eastern European, as opposed to Sephardic, which is North African. My, fa my grandfather's name is Pincus Kahagan. That makes me a Khan or a Cohen. So maybe I should be a minister after all. <laughs> <laughs> he was from Lithuania and Russia. He immigrated to St. Louis just around the time of the Russian Revolution. I don't think things were good for him. Right. No. He initially made a living teaching Hebrew school, and then he became a doctor. Okay, that was one side. That was my dad's side, but that was his dad. My grandmother on my father's side is from Koblenz, Germany, and she is a Gershon. And I only bring that up because of who we are here at this Center for Creative Living. Um, you'll recognize the reference. Gershon was Moses' son. And the reference that you might understand is out of Exodus, and she bore, and this is Zippy who did this, she bore him a son, and he called his name Gershon, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. Oh. So how old is this? <laughs> and how deeply is it in our cellular matter? Wow. So I've got a few minutes to share some goodies like that. You know, I'm Eastern European from Russia. And my, my grandparents came out. Yeah, yeah there, there, is, there are some huge migrations. Um, I've given you in one of the sheets of just a couple of URLs. You could look this up for days, weeks, months, years. And that's an understatement. So I'm going to go through some things um, and hit. I'm going to, what I put together were the four things that most move me out of the many, 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 many things that move me, the four things that just move me incredibly. Um, so I spent a number of years going to Temple in San Francisco. <laughs> The gay synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I learned this, this part about how deeply intimate this relationship is with God. And it's not to say by any means that it's not true elsewhere, but I just was so aware of it there. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to step away from the mic a bit. I want to share my passion. Corky, could you open the door? Sure. It's a good idea. Your passion has to open the door. I love yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. It is. Yeah, I, I do not, portals. Really, it is. It's a great well, Judy is, and you open the door a lot to allow well, Elijah to come in. That's right. so oh. Well, that's for a Passover, but it's yeah. to allow the spirit to come yeah, in. Yeah. All the spirit. I love that. Okay. So there's a, a prayer. It's a, a proclamation, and and I'm. I'm putting my, this is Chris's spin, and I didn't consult anybody on this, okay? If you like what I'm going to talk about, go find out what's true, but I'm going to give you my spin. This is how it washes over me. <clears throat> this is the, it, it's not a call to prayer. In, in my words, it is, I wrote it down. It's a proclamation of the oneness of God in that realm of polytheism and other things that were going on at the time, one of the things that really set the Jews apart was that they made a decision to go with one God in a field of many. And you can, you know, go look that up. And... So I'm going to deliver that proclamation. Please, please, and anybody who wants to say this can do it with me. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. We're going to put in a second verse here. Baruch Shem Kevot, Malchuso. Wow. 
I need to do that. And uh, a couple people in this room know I have done it to the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> and I have done it across buildings. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't big enough. <laughs> That's my passion. So what, what I, we, because I heard it from several people, what we just delivered is the following. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And this is, again, in a field of many. So, I want to give you two passages from Deuteronomy to, to support this concept just ever so slightly. And by the way, I should tell you what it said first. I, you've got this in the notes. Blessed be, excuse me, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, followed by, blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. In English, it works out a little bit better with, blessed is he whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. A lot of the pieces can go together in different ways, but I want to give you a flavor of it so you know if you choose to repeat it, what you're saying. In Deuteronomy, um, two passages. One, do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. So there's an insight into what was going on. Do this because those guys are doing that. And the second one is, you must not turn away from all the commandments I'm giving you today to either the right or to the left, nor pursue other gods and worship them. So I'm just kind of reminding you of what it used to be like. And that is, that is how the, this idea of Judaism and not Judaism, talked about it before, me, not me, us, not us. So this is who we are, and this is one of the huge things that makes us different, us being the early Israelites, from the other people. And as Dottie said, these are the foundations of, I don't know how many billion people, but you know, a tremendous number of people on the earth. The Jewish, the Christian, the Islam, and all the ones who use those as base actually come from this moment. Would you guys, you don't have to do it loud. Would you like to recite this? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Where, where are we? What page? First. First page, in blue. Okay. In blue. In blue. So, oh. okay. <laughs> It's pretty much transliterated right yeah. there. Not the URL. Here, O Israel, do, um, you have a... Under a, liturgy. Yeah, it's under liturgy. It's right. in blue. The English is in purple. Right. Here, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. So I'll say it, and you can repeat after me. I have my accent. There's many accents. There's many melodies. Shema Israel. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Adonai Echad. And then next, the blue one. Baruch Shem Kevod, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malkuso, Malkuso, Leolam Vaed. That last piece was the forever and ever piece. You, we hear it a lot. And I wrote in the notes, if, if you flip to the back side, so Baruch means blessed. You have a guy you might know named Barak. Not Jewish. Gee. Semite, the, 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 the son of Noah. Shem. Semite. And it's the same name as Benedict. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to move on because I only have a couple of minutes and I want to hit some more high points. So, what is the meaning of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement? Um, so, I'm going to read from Wikipedia. It's just concise. According to Jewish tradition, God inscribes each person's fate for the coming year into a book, the Book of Life. They do that on Rosh Hashanah, the first of ten days. That's the new year. And God waits until Yom Kippur for ten days 
to seal the verdict. Seal is a magic word, if you know this word, seal. During the days of awe, or the high holy days, a Jew tries to amend his or her behavior and seeks forgiveness for wrongs done against God and against other human beings. The evening and day of Yom Kippur are set aside for public and private petitions and confessions of guilt. At the end of Yom Kippur, one hopes, and I change that word to celebrates, one <laughs> celebrates that they indeed have been forgiven by God. So, in, uh, in other traditions, one is contrite, one says, you know, one, one bears one's soul, and then through that process, there's a cleansing. Thanks again, Donnie. It goes right into that, a cleansing. Um, and on Yom Kippur, Jews focus on purity, and as such, they become like angels for the day. Ooh. Thank goodness it's only one day. <laughs> There's other days, right, in the calendar where the veil is lifted, and this is one of those days where this veil is lifted. Can you say that again? Can yes. Again? Yes, I have a follow-up on it, too. During Yom Kippur, Jews focus on purity, and as such, they become like angels for the day. Many of the ways in which people worship on Yom Kippur are symbolic of how angels worship in heaven. Wow. As people approach God like the holy angels do, they aim to become like angels on that special day. I bet that means no sex. <laughs> you know, that's item number five. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I can make this available if you guys want so that you have a text. Sure. Yeah. Please. Um, so here are the traditions in this Wikipedia article. The traditions, and the tr these traditions seek to f keep the focus away from the body and more into the spirit. One, no eating and drinking. Right. Two, no wearing of leather shoes. Mm -hmm. Because in order, in order to have a leather shoe, you have to kill an animal to have a leather shoe. That wouldn't be kind. Uh, no bathing or washing. Angels don't bathe. They don't focus on the body. They have auric focus on the spirit. No anointing oneself with perfumes or lotions, and no marital relations. Bingo. Okay, and I'm going to read you it. It's just kind of a thick little short paragraph, but I'll I think it'll clarify a few things. A parallel has been drawn between these activities, those five, and the human condition according to the biblical account of the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Again, how old is this, right? Refraining from these activities symbolically represents a return to a pristine state, which is the theme of the day. By refraining from these activities, the body is uncomfortable, but can still survive. The soul is considered to be the life force in a body. Therefore, by making one's body uncomfortable, one's soul is uncomfortable. By feeling pain, one can fe feel how others feel when they are in pain. And this is the purpose of these prohibitions. Okay. We're going we're gonna to do a, a wrap-up. I'm going to skip a section. We're just going to do a a two-part musical wrap-up. Um, the, the second thing that drew me to Yom Kippur was, well, that Shema, the proclamation, and then this incredible song. And I had said to somebody, I hear s songs in my bones. Mm -hmm. This is a bone song if there ever was one. So, um, Janet, I think I'm just going to do it, and then we'll do the second song. Okay. So... <clears throat> I apologize for being off key already. This is called off key so far, so. <laughs> This is called Our Father, Our King, or it could be Our Mother, Our Ruler. It's actually 53 stanzas long. I'm only giving you two. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I, I want what I want you to hear is the 
this is the, the supplication, if you will, the supplication. It's kind of, to me, it's a combination of, of the supplication of, for forgiveness, but also the gratitude at the same time. Okay? I sing this all day long, too. In the car. <laughs> My first public. Oh, God, so long. Okay, here we go. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. Like the supplication before you sing the supplication. <laughs> It works. Avinu makenu, chanenu vanenu. Avinu makenu, chanenu vanenu. Ki en banu masim, ase imanu. Sedaka vachesed, ase imanu tedaka vachesed, vehoshienu. So if you can imagine a thousand people, two thousand people, having expressed, and I want to make one point about this. When, the, when you go to Yom Kippur and you say, you don't say, I have done this, I have done that. The phrase is we, mm -hmm. and that's key here, especially mm -hmm. with the neighborhood. We, our community, our neighborhood, right. we have done this. We have lied, we have cheated, we have stolen, we have sinned against God, we have done these things. And everybody can find his or her spot mm -hmm. in there where there's like a weakness in that self-protection. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, you know, I did that. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and stop here because I could talk for hours about this. Thank you for oh, listening. Shannon is going to sing a song. Okay. We're all going to sing it together. Well, I'll sing it with you, Jan. Jan, I heard you rehearsing it. I know what you're going to sing. <laughs> and sorry, we only decided after we got here. Yeah. Okay, come so, together. Thank you. For you know, I, I like the, the, the talk about angels because what we always talk about at Yom Kippur, thank you, Chris, that was beautiful. Mm. Yay, um, Chris. Was Yay. That that's the day that the gates of heaven open. So, so what happens is that as you go through Rosh Hashanah and you release and you ask forgiveness and, from people in a physical sense and then enter into Yom Kippur, as, as I love what you put here on your paper, atonement being at oneness. oneness. Yes. That is what that is. That's your time of being mm -hmm. at oneness with God. Sorry for following up with you, Chris, but this is beautiful said. Mm -hmm. That's the angelic energy is because the gates of heaven open. And as we become at one with that God energy and we are feeling the forgiveness, mm -hmm. we are feeling that oneness mm -hmm. that is truly ours always. So I just beautiful. wanted to add that. And thank you, Chris. That was beautiful. Beautiful. And Chris, you made it alive because you made it intimacy that breaks open our hearts. And it's the community that holds our hearts. So join with us.
peace and let us all live in peace. Yes. Yes. I have a question. Um, do other religions share this um, holiday, this type of theme of